Hi guys, this is Mr. Rego. And today we're finding is this function odd, even, neither? Where is decreasing, increasing? Where's the constant? We're going to find also the local and relative max or minimum and also the absolute max or minimum. All right, let's start. First of all, let's do even functions. This is the definition and this is the graph. So an even function has to be, has to have symmetry with respect to the y axis. If you notice, this side, if we do symmetry to over the y-axis, it's going to give me this. This graph, again, the right side, this is the y-axis. The right side, if I flip it mirror over the y-axis, it's going to give me this. So this is an even function. The last one, the right side, flip over the y-axis, it has symmetry. So all these are even functions. All right, let's talk about odd functions. This is the definition. Now, the odd function has symmetry with respect to the origin. Let's look at this first graph. So, basically, it's a double symmetry. If I flip this over the y-axis, then this portion of my graph is going to be facing like that. And then, if I have this and I do symmetry on the x-axis, then it's going to end up here. So, when we have symmetry among the origin, basically, I'm doing over the y and then over the x. Okay, another way of seeing this is that when I have symmetry among the origin, look at the points. This is a comma two, and my symmetry here is negative a negative two. The x and the y are going to change the sign. Look at the one and one. X and y are going to change the sign. So this point has symmetry with this point among the origin. Another one, one neg one comma one. It turns into negative one negative one this has symmetry among the origin this piece becomes this all right now when we have symmetry among the origin right with respect to the origin if my one piece of my graph is in quarter one then when i do symmetry among the origin it's going to go diagonal it's going to go to q3 okay if my piece of the graph is in q2 then when I do symmetry on the origin, it's going to end up in Q4. Keep that in mind. What about if I have a function? What about if I have the equation? How do I know if it's even, odd, or neither? If you notice on the definition, I have f of negative x equals to f of x. This is when it is even function. Or if it's odd, then it's negative x. f of negative x equals negative f of x. Let me show you what's going on. So the first thing that I apply is, this is what I apply right away, right? I'm going to come up here, and it says, all right, let's do f of negative x. What is this? Basically, wherever you see an x, you turn it into a negative x, and you write everything else. After that, you just solve by PEMDAS, all operations. Negative x to the second power is going to become positive x squared. And now I look at my answer. Is this the same as the original? Yes, it is. So basically, I can replace this by f of x, right? Because that was my original. Therefore, f of negative x is the same as f of x, which is the definition for my even function. Therefore, this is an even function. Let's try this one. f of negative x. Whatever I see in x, I turn it into a negative x. Be careful. Make sure you have parentheses. 5, negative x to the third power is going to become negative x to the third power. Negative, negative becomes positive. 5 times this is going to be negative 5x cubed. Let's check if this is even. If this is even, once I replace by negative x, I will have the same original function. Is this the same as my original function? No. Therefore, it's not even let's check if it's odd how do i check if you notice there's a negative in front of my function so what i do here is, is i take a negative as a common factor negative 5x cubed divided by negative this is going to turn into 5x cubed positive x divided by negative is going to become negative x and once i have this i have my negative from here now what is inside the parentheses is it the same thing as my original function yes so I can write negative f of x. 
because I took a negative as a common factor and my original is the same as the parentheses, then this is an odd function. Let's look at the last one. How do we start? f of negative x. That's how we start every time. What do you see in x? Negative x. Apply the exponents or whatever you have. Negative x to the third power becomes negative x to the third power without the parentheses. Now, is this the same as the original? No. So it's not even. My next step is I have to check if it's odd. Therefore, I take a negative as a common factor. Negative x cubed divided by this gives me a positive x cubed. Negative 1 divided by negative gives me a positive 1. And once I have the negative on the outside, I check. Is this the same as the original function? No, it's not. Therefore, it's not odd. So if it's not even, not odd, it's going to be a neither one of them. All right? Now, let's talk about increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. This is my definition. Long story short, when you're graphing, you look at your graphs from left to right. From left to right. If your graph is going up, is increasing. If your graph is going down, is decreasing. If the is a horizontal line, that means your y value is constant. It's the same regardless of your x value. Regardless of the x value, your y value is constant. So this is constant. Increasing, decreasing, constant. Let's do an example. So if I have this example, I need to write where the intervals are increasing, decreasing, or constant. So I'm going to start from left to right. This piece is a horizontal line. That means that's constant. How do I write my interval? My interval, I take the x values. That's what I write. So my function is constant between negative 4 and negative 2. Negative 4, negative 2. I use brackets to write the intervals. I'm here. Now my function is going to go up. So this is increasing, increasing. From where? From negative 2 all the way to 0. We look at the x values of those two points. From negative 2 to 0 is increasing. Negative 2 to 0. Bracket. OK, I'm here. Now I'm going to go down. I don't stop here. I keep going down. Keep going down. What are my x values? 3. And what here was? zero so this is decreasing from zero all the way to three remember the interval always is the x values now i'm here now i go up again from where three to four so here three to four and that's a pretty much it increasing decreasing and constant all right guys if you're still with me and if you're learning something, please support me by subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me tremendously. It helps me get into the YouTube algorithm. So please subscribe and thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. All right, let's go next. What do we have? Local max, local minimum. This is also called relative max and minimum. This is the definition. What's going on? Basically, it's a maximum value in an open interval. So you have some kind of parabola. Graph before, graph after, and this is a max. So this is called lo local or relative max. Here, again, some kind of parabola, which is not. What I'm saying is you have graph before, graph after. It's an open interval with a minimum value. All right, let me give you an example. So we have this graph. We're going to find local max, local minimum, all right, or relative max and minimum is the same thing. So as you notice, I have a minimum here. So my minimum value is going to happen at negative 1. That's my minimum value. That's your local minimum of negative 1. It's going to happen at x equals negative 2. So your local minimum is negative 1. That's your y value. And it happens at x equals negative 2. Other way of writing this out, f of negative 2 equals negative 1. This is your minimum value. This is your x value. Another local minimum. This is another minimum. You see that? Graph before, graph after. 
and my minimum value is going to be 0 and it's going to happen at x equals 1 so I can write as f of 1 equals 0 minimum value x equals 1 happens at x equals 1 what about local max or relative max 3 I have a local max of 3 happens at, at x equals 0 or f of 0 equals 3 all right so local max local minimum local minimum what about absolute max absolute minimum again I'm gonna have some interval right and I'm gonna have a maximum value or absolute minimum let me show you so I have this graph here we're gonna find all the information that we have so far relative max relative minimum absolute max absolute minimum and then we go increasing decreasing as well so first of all this is a relative max minimum I'm sorry relative minimum why because I have a minimum value in an open interval I have graph before and graph after relative minimum equals to 3 at x equals 1 or again f of 1 equals 3 relative max six at x equals three so your maximum value is the y value minimum value is the y value all right what about absolute max absolute max is the the, the biggest value at all this is the six this is the highest value so equals six at x equals three so this point is a relative max but it's also an absolute max what about absolute minimum so this is a relative minimum but is this the lowest value on my graph no two is the lowest value okay so when i have an absolute maximum or absolute minimum i don't need to have a graph after this it could be an endpoint my relative max and minimum I need to be it has to be between an open interval my absolute max or minimum can be at an endpoint so this is my absolute minimum which is 2 and it happens at x equals 5 all right let's go bonus questions this is an SAT type of questions guys and you know it's connected here what's the idea the idea is they're going to ask you something like this. How much is f of negative 1 or f of 0 or f of 4 or f of 5? This is function notation. Remember, what goes in the parentheses is the x value. But f of x is the same as y, right? So they're asking you for the y value when the x is negative 1. Negative 1. You go to your x values and this is negative 1. From there, you got to go to where the graph is. If the graph is above, you go above, or is below, below. In this case, my graph is above. So x negative 1, and I go straight up. And when I touch my graph, I go to the right. And the value here is 5. So f of negative 1 is the y value is 5. f of 0. Remember, this is your x value. So 0, I go to my graph. And whatever I touch it, that's my y value. f of 4. x is 4. How much is my y value here? 0. f of 5. I go for 5. Now, the x equals 5. My graph is not above. It's below. So I go down until I touch my graph. And then I come to my y-axis. And the value is negative 1. Okay? So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, please. That's going to help me a lot tremendously. So, and I thank you for the support, guys. Take care. Bye bye.